Welcome to the narrated lecture on transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, or TENS, and interferential current, or IFC, both of which are used primarily for the relief of pain. The first part of this lecture will outline the theory, application, and research evidence relating to TENS, and the second part will concentrate on IFC. Finally, a comparison will be made between the two devices. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation has a range of different parameters and it is important that you know about the effects of each. You covered some of this information last week. The waveform basically describes the shape of each pulse of electrical stimulation and will determine the comfort of stimulation. If there is an equal positive and negative charge, then no chemical effects will take place. This parameter is fixed on most TENS devices. Pulse duration, or pulse width, is the length of time that each electrical pulse lasts and on most devices is adjustable between 50 and 200 microseconds. Wider pulse durations are generally more uncomfortable but stimulate nerves more easily and this is typified in the strength duration curve. Pulse frequency or pulse rate is the number of pulses per second and on most devices is variable between 5 and 200 pulses per second. Increasing the number of pulses stimulates nerves more easily typified by the strength frequency curve. The current intensity determines the strength of sensation or reaction and depends not just on the amount of electricity applied to the patient but also on factors such as skin resistance, the distance between electrodes, the size of the electrodes and many other factors. Intensity must therefore be guided by the subjective sensation or the observed reaction such as muscle stimulation. The most common intensity is one which is described by the subject as being strong but comfortable. Here are some pictures of some traditional TENS devices that we have at Queen Margaret University College. You can see that they are very small and portable and as such they can be used by the patient at home. They are also very inexpensive. You can purchase a TENS machine for roughly £30. Many other larger stimulation devices such as this one also allow you to apply TENS in addition to other forms of electrical stimulation. Such devices have the disadvantages of being large and bulky meaning that patients must come to the physiotherapy department for treatment. These devices are also very expensive at up to £3,000. TENS pulses may be delivered in different patterns or modes. The most common mode is conventional TENS, which is high frequency, approximately 100 Hz, and low intensity, i.e. an intensity which is described as strong but comfortable. Acupuncture-like TENS is low frequency, around 5 Hz, and high intensity, i.e. an intensity which will cause some muscle stimulation and may be described as uncomfortable. Burst TENS combines both conventional and acupuncture-like TENS by delivering high frequency stimulation in short bursts. For example, 100 Hz TENS in 5 bursts per second. Again, a high intensity is used where there will be muscle stimulation and it may be described as being uncomfortable. These three modes of TENS are depicted here. High frequency, low intensity, conventional TENS. Low frequency, high intensity, acupuncture-like TENS and low frequency bursts of high frequency, high intensity current, or burst TENS. 
TENS is proposed to work via a range of different mechanisms. It is proposed that stimulation of nerves, for example pain fibres, at frequencies above their maximum rates of conduction will lead to fatigue of the nerve and block of nerve conduction. The evidence for this suggests that it might only occur at very high frequencies and intensities that are five times what would normally be tolerated by humans. It is therefore unlikely to be an important mechanism clinically. TENS was actually designed on the basis of the pain gate theory, where stimulation of large diameter afferent nerves inhibits the activity of dorsal horn cells involved with nociception. This is likely to be an important mechanism. TENS has also been reported to cause the release of endogenous opioids and to activate descending pain suppression systems. High intensity stimulation is required to activate these mechanisms. TENS may also have effects on the processing of noxious information at cortical levels. The gate control theory is central to understanding how TENS may work. Conventional TENS will stimulate A beta fibres. These fibres are normally involved with the sensations of light touch, vibration and pressure. And stimulation of these nerves by TENS is where the sensation of pins and needles comes from. Activity in these fibres reaches the spinal cord before activity in pain fibres, i.e. before activity in A delta fibres and C fibres. This activity in A beta fibres then inhibits the passage of nociceptive impulses to higher centres and thus reduces the perception of pain. Each mode of TENS is thought to activate different pain relief mechanisms. Conventional TENS, for example, is thought to activate mainly the pain gate theory by primarily stimulating A beta fibres. Acupuncture like TENS, on the other hand, is thought to activate the release of endogenous opioids and activate descending pain suppression mechanisms. Burst TENS is thought to possess the benefits of both conventional and acupuncture-like TENS. It is highly unlikely, however, that the mechanisms of actions are so simple, and there may be strong psychological effects influencing cortical processing of pain information, regardless of the mode of delivery. The contraindications of TENS are outlined here. Care should also be taken when driving or operating machinery and patients should be reminded of this. When applying TENS, you should always determine that the patient's sensation is okay by doing a sharp blunt test. Self-demonstration is useful and a very quick way to check that the output from the device is OK. Electrodes may be placed in a range of different sites. The most common site is over the area of pain, but if this is not suitable, then other alternatives may be within the same dermatome, over the peripheral nerve, over the nerve root, or to trigger points. There is currently little evidence to suggest which might be most effective. An even distribution of gel is required on each electrode. This ensures an even current density and improves patient comfort. Tape should be used to hold the electrodes in place and the tape should be applied so that even pressure is obtained on each electrode. You should select the appropriate TENS parameters depending upon the desired effects and patient comfort. 
The duration of treatment should start off low, perhaps half an hour, and should be increased if there is no effect or if longer pain relief is required. If TENS is used for long periods, drying out of the gel may become a problem, so the patient should be encouraged to remove the electrodes, clean them and reapply with new gel from time to time. The research evidence for TENS is conflicting, despite the very large number of trials. There is some very good evidence for the effects of TENS on experimental cold pain, but other forms of experimental pain have not produced consistent findings. Systematic reviews of the effects of TENS on acute pain have suggested that there may be little effect. Systematic reviews of the effects on chronic pain, however, have suggested that TENS may have some beneficial effects. Overall, therefore, the evidence is contradictory. Reasons for these contradictions are many, and there have been calls for much stricter attention to experimental details when making decisions on whether to include trials in systematic reviews. Many trials, for example, have used parameters which most clinicians would consider clinically irrelevant, such as applying TENS for five minutes in patients with chronic pain and then immediately assessing the outcome. If we move on then from TENS to talk about interferential current or IFC, interferential current also has other abbreviations and you may see as well as IFC you may see the use of IC or IFT but basically interferential current is just another form of electrical stimulation which is used for pain relief. I will use the term IFC throughout this presentation. IFC uses two slightly out of phase medium frequency currents which are then applied to the body. These two currents mix in the tissue to create a new medium frequency current that increases and decreases in intensity at low frequency. This low frequency is called the amplitude modulated frequency or the beat frequency. For example, if we apply two currents, one of 4000 Hz and another of 4100 Hz, when they mix in the tissues, they will produce a current which has a frequency of the mean of those two currents, i.e. 4050 Hz. And the amplitude modulated frequency of this new current will be equal to the difference between those two currents, i.e. 100 Hz. This is depicted in the following diagram. Currents A and B, which are currently slightly different frequencies, are applied to the body. Where two peaks of current coincide, they add together, and where a peak and a trough coincide, they will cancel each other out. This produces a gradual increase and decrease in intensity, and the rate of this increase and decrease in intensity is known as the amplitude modulated frequency. And essentially this represents separate pockets of medium frequency current. These are some of the IFC devices that we have at Queen Margaret University College. You can see that as opposed to TENS devices, IFC devices tend to be quite large and bulky and they are also very expensive 
and require the patient to attend for treatment. There are now portable IFC devices, but these remain much more expensive than TENS, retailing at approximately £500. IFC is claimed to have advantages other, over other types of electrical stimulation. Firstly, the medium frequency is reported to reduce skin resistance and thereby improve comfort. Whilst this is true, it is the phase duration of the current which determines skin resistance. And the phase duration of interferential current at 4000 Hz is approximately 125 microseconds. The evidence would suggest that setting of TENS pulses to the same phase duration of interferential current will produce precisely the same effect. Similar arguments are made for the depth of penetration with IFC but have been similarly criticised. IFC has also been claimed to do the above things while still producing the necessary low frequency effects. Traditional low frequency stimulation such as TENS may be equally effective however. Crossover of the electrodes allows localisation of the lesion. Again this may also be achieved by using four electrodes with TENS. Theoretically, the amplitude modulated frequency of interferential current is claimed to mimic TENS, i.e. 5 Hz amplitude modulated frequency should have the same effects as 5 Hz TENS. Alteration of TENS frequency, however, changes the effects that it has on excitable tissues. Whilst altering the amplitude modulated frequency of interferential current does not. Clearly, therefore, interferential current does not mimic TENS. This is shown in this graph. As TENS frequency decreases, it requires higher peak current intensities to reach sensory threshold. Alteration of the amplitude modulated frequency of interferential current, however, shows very little effect on the peak current intensity required and a 0 Hz amplitude modulated frequency, i.e. pure 4000 Hz current, is similar as to when an AMF is included. The medium frequency component of interferential current, therefore, is the most important component, rather than the AMF as traditionally claimed. IFC has a range of claimed effects. Pain relief has been claimed to be affected by similar mechanisms as TENS, although the effects on blood flow are not normally associated with TENS. Evidence for the effects on blood flow is poor. One study that did show an increase was unable to exclude the possibility that this was due to muscle stimulation. IFC has claimed effects on tissue and bone healing and there is some evidence for this, although the trials are of very poor quality. IFC has traditionally been used for the stimulation of muscle particularly of the pelvic floor. There is good evidence to support this use, although a range of other types of electrical stimulation are now more commonly used for this function. IFC is also often used for the reduction of swelling. There is no experimental evidence to support this. IFC is traditionally applied via four electrodes so that the currents mix in the tissues. There is evidence, however, to suggest that this produces a very haphazard pattern of modulation and not the nice predictable patterns suggested in theory. 
The currents may also be mixed within the machine itself or a pre-modulated application. This guarantees that the electrical current applied is evenly modulated. Some IFC devices allow the application of electrodes via suction cups. This suction may have additional effects on stimulation of the skin, on blood flow and on swelling, although they are difficult to apply to the patient. The current intensity used is most often a strong but comfortable sensation. The amplitude modulated frequency used depends upon the desired effects and there are claims that this is the most important parameter. As detailed earlier however, this has been shown to be inaccurate. Most subjects prefer higher amplitude modulated frequencies of around 100 Hz and therefore this may be a good starting point. The time of application is normally 15 to 20 minutes, although there is no scientific rationale for this. It does fit well with the amount of time available with the patient, however. Most IFC devices provide a function that allows the frequency to periodically alter. This theoretically reduces the amount of adaptation, but again there is no evidence for this. The frequency may also simply be put on a constant setting, for example a constant 100 Hz. If a sweep is selected, the pattern of that sweep may be altered, for example to slowly rise and fall over a period of 6 seconds, or to deliver one frequency for one second and then automatically change to the other frequency for another second. The frequency of the medium carrier frequency may also be changed on many machines. Traditionally this is 4000 Hz but 2000 Hz has been reported to be preferable for muscle stimulation. Yet again there is little evidence to support this. The contraindications to interferential current are as follows. Both IFC and TENS are used for the relief of pain. Therefore, it is important to assess their relative effectiveness. And this raises the major question of whether interferential current and TENS are actually different in terms of the effects that they have on pain and on other reactions within the body. TENS may have a range of benefits due to its small size, its low cost and its ease of use. It has already been demonstrated that alteration of TENS parameters alters how it stimulates excitable tissues and it is therefore more adaptable than interferential current. The evidence would suggest that there are no differences between interferential current and TENS on experimental pain. Differences in effects on clinical pain, however, have yet to be adequately assessed, although one randomized controlled trial fail to show additional effects of either TENS or interferential current over exercise in the treatment of osteoarthritic knee pain. I hope that you have found this lecture helpful in introducing you to TENS and interferential current, both of which are widely used for the relief of pain. Although the experimental evidence for these modalities is conflicting, they do have a sound scientific rationale and may prove to be a useful adjunct to other treatment approaches. It is unlikely, however, that there is much difference in the effectiveness of the two modalities, although TENS does possess a range of advantages 
over interferential current. The main chapters in the book by Sheila Kitchen, Electrotherapy, Evidence-Based Practice, should be consulted for further information on these modalities. Your handbook contains further reference material and this final reference should be added to that list. Thank you.